Hey everybody, I'm TJ. Welcome to my channel, New Zealand Mysteries. Awesome to have you here. Uh, before we get into this case, I just wanted to tell you something exciting. I don't know if you've noticed, but we are so close to 1,000 subscribers. We're at like 991 or something ridiculous like that. And when we get to 1,000, it's like uh, this huge milestone. Um, in, in YouTube I think it sort of cements that you're like kind of here you've put in the groundwork um, and hopefully it means that you know more people will notice the channel and, and help us out and share the information which is the most important thing so I just wanted to say thank you to all of you because obviously obviously I couldn't have done it without you so awesome thank you so much now let's have a look at our story today so today we're looking into the case of Melissa Ewings, very beautiful young lady who said she was gone for a walk and never uh, was found or seen again. So it's a very sad case, but we need the details. So let's get into it. All right, first we're going to tvnz.co.nz and this was Tuesday, September 22nd, 2020. There are serious concerns for a woman who said she was going for a walk to a river on Sunday Info and hasn't been seen since. So let's have a quick look. Police say Melissa Ewings, 31 from Clarence in North Canterbury, was reported missing yesterday after she didn't turn up for work. A friend of Melissa's said she, well, Melissa had said she was going to walk to the Clarence River two days ago. Melissa's friends and family have serious concerns for her welfare, police say. Police urge anyone who may have seen Melissa in the Clarence area on Sunday to contact 105, quoting file number 200922-5064. And of course, I'm going to have that in the description box below uh, if you need it. But let's move on to our next article. Actually, quickly before um, we move on to the next article, I just wanted to show you uh, whereabouts a Kaikoura is and then where Clarence is. Uh, so, for some reason, I tagged this Winter Home Garden. I don't know who they are, but I suppose I'm giving them some short of, sort of shout out because I'm stupid at using Google sometimes. So, Kaikoura is here, and this place called Clarence is around here. So, nzherald.co.nz, missing woman mystery. Police searching for Melissa's uh, Ewing's track phone to 100 meters. That was on the 28th of September 2020, and I apologize for the mouth mush because I can feel it coming on already. Detectives investigating the mysterious sudden disappearance of a Marlborough woman tracked her phone to within a 100 meter radius of her house. Melissa Ewings, 31, hasn't been seen for eight days despite an extensive police search operation and mounting fears for her safety by concerned family members. Her family say it's out of character for the keen adventurer not to keep in touch with family. Ewings lived alone in a rented house at Clarence, 60 kilometres north of Kaikoura. She was last seen just before dusk on Sunday, September the 20th and failed to show up at work at a beekeeping business just 400 metres from her house the following morning. Couldn't be a beekeeper. No, definitely not. I, I'm scared with one bee around and I have like a panic attack and throw my arms and legs around and, and you, you blah blah. No, couldn't do it. Ewings had previously lived at accommodation at the beekeeping operation, mainly used by seasonal workers and which includes a caravan, but had moved to her own place about a month ago. On the day she was last seen, she visited neighbours at around midday. They told the Herald that she appeared, quote, good as gold and happy during the half hour visit. An official missing persons search was launched last Monday. Melissa's house was reportedly found locked, with a car left behind along with her wallet and bank cards. None of her personal belongings were missing, apart from the phone, of course. 
Everything was there, nothing had been taken or moved out of the house, said her grandma, who's based in the Gold Coast. Her phone was missing though. The Herald understands the police later tracked the phone through cell data to within a 100 metre radius of the house. Grid searches were carried out around the property, which includes paddocks with tall grass. State Highway 1, which is the main highway in New Zealand, runs sort of up and down the country, and native bush. Neighbours have also been out trying to find it and metal detectors have been utilised. It's not clear if it's yet been found. Uh, you'd think so, surely. Uh, within 100 metres and all those people and um, the metal detectors and everything, surely they found it. It's understood that a search team even tried phoning the mobile device from a nearby hillside at night to see if it produced any light in the darkness. CCTV from neighbouring properties have also been seized by police and reviewed for any clues. Police search teams have gone through all of the local properties and spoken to the residents. The Herald understands, along with search and rescue teams scouring the nearby Clarence River, which has been swollen and muddy since her disappearance. Coastline checks have also been done, while helicopters have been looking from the skies. It's been more than seven days and it's a complete bloody mystery. Something's not right, one local told the Herald. Search teams from throughout the South Island are in the Clarence area assisting local police, a spokesperson said. They have searched daily over an extensive area around Clarence and the Clarence River. It definitely seems like the police have pulled out all the stops on this one and done a thorough search. They... Um, the search will continue over the coming days, weather permitting, said the spokesperson. Detectives from Blenheim CIB are investigating Melissa's disappearance. Police have a mobile base set up nearby and officers were seen in the area today. Melissa's employers were not home when the Herald called this afternoon. They have not responded to messages. Yeah, well maybe they just don't want to speak to you. The family had been told that Melissa had bumped into two elderly women during her walk on Sunday night. They said they saw her get in her car and drive home, but nobody has seen her since. I thought she'd actually walked down, but these ladies said they saw her drive home, so I don't know. Mum, Melissa's mum is said to be distraught, obviously, and has hardly slept since learning of her disappearance when it was reported by her boss on Monday morning. Um, that's a weird thing for them to say. Of course, her mother and her family and friends are going to be distraught and hardly sleep when their loved one is missing. She travels a lot and was working in Clarence and she absolutely loved her job, absolutely loved it. So it's very strange that all of this has happened, said Grandma. Uh, Grandma said she last spoke to her granddaughter on Friday. Melissa was in good spirits and was telling her about possible plans to attend a car show on Saturday with a friend from work. Grandma said it was odd for Melissa not to have been in touch with anyone. She says we're starting to wonder a little bit. It's just odd for her not to have been in touch with somebody. She contacts everybody, all the family, all the time. Melissa was one of five siblings, she said, and part of a wider, tight-knit family. A, sp a spokeswoman from the police confirmed yesterday search teams from all over the South Island were in the Clarence area, assisting local police with the search. On September 20th, Melissa left an address in Clarence Valley to go for a walk. She had not indicated she would be gone for a long period. Search teams have been searching every day since over an extensive area around Clarence and the river she said, the spokeswoman said, the search would continue over the come days, weather permitted. As for whether police were treating her disappearance as suspicious, the spokeswoman said she was being treated as a missing person and police are keeping an open mind as to what has happened. Okay, so, very bizarre. And she's so beautiful and it's very very hard on the family and grandma uh, being overseas and not being able to do things that's pretty damn hard as well so let's move on stuff.co.nz Clarence neighbors recount missing woman Melissa Ewing's last known moments and this was October the 1st 2020 
Neighbours of missing woman Melissa Ewing say they are traumatised by her disappearance as the investigation moves from search and rescue into a wider inquiry phase. Police are still actively working to piece together the 31-year-old's last movements from the last time she was seen on September 20 to when she failed to turn up for work the next day in Clarence, north of Kaikoura. A neighbour has supplied police with security camera footage that shows Melissa visiting his house on a beautiful spring Sunday and she was dressed in a yellow top and shorts laughing and talking and I'm not going to try and say that word because it's too hard. But he did say she was in a very good mood, said the neighbour who did not want to be named. He said I didn't really know her that well, she had only just moved from the honey place a month before. She was working as a beekeeper before she went missing and was described as a hard-working, reliable, friendly woman who liked the outdoors. A woman who lived down the road had bumped into Melissa near the Clarence River mouth later that evening, walking her dog with a friend about 7pm. So, if you look around here, Kaikoura is down here and Clarence is here. They saw Melissa drive home in her car, the neighbour said. They had a chat for about 10 minutes and then she drove off. They were probably the last people to see her, he said. What happened between then and her not appearing at work on Monday, who knows. She always turned up for work, so her employer came looking for her and she was very worried. Police arrived to search the area before dawn on the morning of Tuesday, September the 22nd he said. Search and rescue arrived on Tuesday afternoon. Melissa's rental backed onto scrub bordering the Clarence River. It had an outdoor living area with a glass door and a tall fence used as easy access to the river, the neighbour said. My partner said if she had headed towards the river, she must have gone through the glass door and walked through the back paddock, so that would be the place to look, but the grass is about a foot high. Another neighbour had told him they saw the glass door open on September the 21st, flapping in the wind. He had also heard the house itself was locked and her wallet was inside. Police have not yet confirmed this, but we kind of heard that in the last article, but I don't know if it was confirmed or not. He says, I believe she might have gone through the glass door, headed or heading for the river or the sea, just going from that, but it is possible someone else opened it. On September 23rd, a friend suggested he turn on Bluetooth on his cell phone to see if it would pick up Melissa's cell phone's Bluetooth signal. Good on him for thinking about that because I wouldn't have thought about it. We went over and walked around her house and I did pick up a signal but it did not say if it was coming from Melissa's phone. On Saturday, September 26th, there were police everywhere in helicopters as search efforts ramped up, he said. Police confirmed they found Melissa's cell phone on Saturday. Oh, good. So they found it, along with other items of interest. Oh, that's new. Um, though they had not confirmed what those items were. The neighbour heard from a friend in Search and Rescue that the phone was found about 100 metres from the house, but he was unsure where exactly. It is gorse all around. So now we're hearing that they found the phone and some other items. Um even though they're not sort of shedding light on where she is, unfortunately, um, yes, because of course she hasn't been found. That's very sad. Oh, come on, mouse, don't do this to me now. Land search and rescue teams from Marlborough, Christchurch, Hanma, Springs, Hiranui and Murchison have been supporting the Kakoda search team using highly trained volunteers to scour the riverbed, as well as surrounding scrub, gorse, grassland, rural areas and the small township. Marlborough Landsar, which is Land Search and Rescue, Chairman Peter Hamill said much of the land surrounding the river was high country and the river had been running high and dirty after recent rain. He said we started with some of the last places she was seen and the places she may have been headed towards. We searched the area near her house and other points of interest, places she was known to frequent. Then you start looking further out. One of the things we know about searches, most clues of relevance you find within 300 metres of their last known points. 
okay so teams went down and covered the 300 meters area carefully looking for specific clues the Landslide Tasman Region Chairman Sean Crabbs said there were 30 people sweeping the area on the busiest search day last Saturday. They covered both sides of State Highway 1, mainly on the northern side of the river near Ewing's house, he said. They were supported by amateur radio emergency communications, managing radio communications along with other planning and support personnel before the Marlborough team withdrew this week. And I'm just trying to find my mouse because my mouse has gone missing. Um, I don't know where it is, but it's uh, pulling this down, so at least that's something. Um, oh, here it is. Um, so, yeah, well, police, uh, there's just so much going on. So many organisations that came up to help um, look for her, which is really awesome. Police said the physical search was scaled back on Tuesday to focus on collecting leads in the wider inquiry phase. Detective Senior Sergeant Karen Sloan said there was no reason to suspect foul play. It was more likely a misadventure, considering all the facts at hand. A fisherman had died surf casting for salmon at the mouth of the Clarence River four years ago. He was fishing from a small gravel sandbar between the river and the sea, wearing chest-high waders with attached rubber gum boots when he was knocked off his feet, pulled into the river and dragged out to sea by a rogue wave in 2016. A coroner found the man could have survived if he was wearing a life jacket. I don't know, uh, would she have gone that close to the river just wearing her normal clothes? Was she the type of person that would, would do that? I don't know. The Clarence farmer, John Reader, was one of the people that helped pull that man from the sea. He said the Clarence River mouth was a dangerous place in flood. The river was up when she went missing that Saturday. I wouldn't say it was a flash flood, but we did have heavy rain up in the mountains. He said when it is running clear, you can see the bottom, but when it is in flood, it can be dangerous. Even when you are on the bank, it can be dangerous. His son had employed Melissa to work at his new cafe on the Kokoda coast two to three months before lockdown. Rita said his son told her Melissa was uncomfortable working in a public facing job amid the pandemic, so she took a job as a beekeeper in Clarence. She was a very strong girl, he said. I would be surprised if she did have an accident, but if the banks gave way, as they can do when the water is high and she fell in, maybe. He saw the search teams scouring the whole area last week on the northern side of the river near her home with dogs and metal detectors, he said. The river mouth, uh, the, 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 the river mouth even, is widely used by the public. A lot of people camp at the river mouth for salmon fishing and white baiting, and it is well frequented by kayakers and rafters. Lots of people use the river. Another neighbour, who did not want to be named, said the small Clarence community was still stunned by the disappearance, 12 days since she was last seen. They say it is just a terrible situation, everyone has been a bit traumatised by it. The police were still visibly working in the area on Thursday, she said. Senior Sergeant Peter Payne said the cell phone and items were being analysed by police. Uh, and anyone who found items of interest or with information about her disappearance can call the Blenheim Police or 105 at quoting the file number. Of course, that's going to be in the description box below if you have any information or find any items of interest. Righto. Just quickly before we go on to our uh, next article if you have any info about the cases i cover on my channel please call crime stoppers 0800 555 one you can also go online you call 105 you can do that online as well or go to your local cop station any uh so you duh if you want to get hold of me nzmissing at gmail.com that's what i'm trying to say we're on facebook we have a website and we're on podcast where uh you listen if you can support the channel with a three dollar donation please go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash nz mysteries um it really helps paying for subscriptions to get to the articles i also go onto facebook and when i can afford it 
I uh, boost posts of these videos so that it goes way out on Facebook and gets to as many people as possible and I can't do that without your guys help so I appreciate people that have helped you can use the PayPal link in the description box below if you prefer or there's a bank account number please 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 like the videos that I do I work really really hard please subscribe to the channel I want to hit that thousand and more of course and hit the notification bell and go to all because that means you're going to get notified when I release a video and any updates of course as well so thanks for everyone that helps let's keep going okay we're at newshub.co.nz search for missing Marlborough woman Melissa Ewing's called off by police this is on the 14th of October 2020 the search for missing Marlborough woman Melissa Ewings has been suspended. Melissa, 31, from the small town of Clarence, north of Kaikoura, failed to show up for work last month and has been missing ever since. Police say they are continuing to keep an open mind as to what's happened to her and will review any new information brought to light. We want to acknowledge how difficult the past few weeks have been for Melissa's family, friends and colleagues and her neighbours and we will continue to keep an open mind as to what has happened to her said Marlborough Area Prevention Manager Peter Payne. Every missing person inquiry is treated on a case-by-case -case basis and as a decision about when to suspend a search involves a number of factors including the areas able to be searched, evidence located and other lines of inquiry being exhausted. We also want to thank the search and rescue teams and volunteers that have helped search for Melissa. I must be extremely sad when um, the family hears that the search is being suspended. It must be very, very tough um, and my heart goes out to them. Okay, last we've got a uh, article from Otago Daily Times and this was um, March this year. Six months gone, the mysterious disappearance of Melissa Ewings. Six months ago, 31-year-old Melissa Ewings went for a walk and was never seen again. She was last seen just before dusk on Sunday, September 20, and failed to show up at work at a beekeeping business just 400 metres from her house the following morning. Melissa was then reported missing. For half a year, her family and friends have held out hope that she would be found but her disappearance remains a mystery. After Melissa vanished, police found her house was locked, her car parked in its usual spot, her wallet and bank cards where they should be. None of her personal belongings were, belongings were missing, but we know the phone was. Uh, Melissa's family said she was a keen adventurer, but it was very unlikely not to keep in contact with them. Days after she was last seen, her cell phone was found trapped to within 100 metres of her home at Clarence. The Herald reported at the time that police search teams had gone through all of the local properties and spoken to the residents as search and rescue teams scoured the nearby Clarence River. The body of water had been swollen and muddy since Melissa's disappeared and there were fears she may have fallen in. Simply, um, Melissa just vanished. 24 days after Melissa was reported missing, Marlborough Area Prevention Manager Peter Payne said the search for her had been officially suspended. While we are no longer actively searching for her, Melissa, we will review any new information that is brought to our attention. Um, he acknowledged again how difficult the disappearance had been for the family and promised that he would continue to keep an open mind as to what happened to her. Police continue to make inquiries into her disappearance and will also review any new info that is brought to their attention. And again, the numbers you can call. Just another um, family having to deal with not knowing what happened to their loved one, uh, joining a group that I don't think anyone would want to belong to. Very, very tough. And... Um, I reach out to the family and uh, give them my thoughts and prayers it must be absolutely awful if you have any information uh, if you know anything if you've found items around the area anything like that
please go to the description box below and uh, the information is there uh, to call out and tell somebody i will see you next time thank you very much for sticking around uh, it was a rather long one but an important one and we'll see you next time peace out